23rd August 2023, India was on the moon. 1.4 billion population of Indians were on the moon. Not only because Chandrayaan-3 had a successful landing, it had a successful landing at the South Pole which had hitherto been done by none. To talk more about this and specifically to talk more on National Space Day which is going to be celebrated tomorrow to salute the successful South Pole landing of Chandrayaan-3, I am joined by an expert who led the team from the front who put all of us over the moon last year. The representative of the brilliant minds that make all of us proud time and again, Mr. S. Somanath, Chairperson, Indian Space Research Organization. Sir, welcome. Thank you so much. Sir, actually, I would like to talk from, I would like to start from your experience. I, uh, what I'm trying to ask you is, it's as a citizen of this country, we were praying from the heart when 6 o'clock time, the clock ticked off to 6 o'clock last year. But you there sitting in the hot seat, not only as the citizen of this beautiful nation, but also as a scientist and as a chairperson who led the Chandrayaan-3 mission from the front. So could you share your experience? How was it? Uh, the experience of uh, that day apart, I believe my experience was on the previous years, working with the team in developing the rocket that sent the craft to the moon, uh, working on the Chandrayaan-2 craft, which uh, uh, which we launched and had uh, almost a near miss uh, in the Chandrayaan-2 making a soft land, and also the trailer analysis, corrections, improvement to leading up to Chandrayaan-3. All of them, I was part of it. So I knew the system in and out. Uh, and on that day when we were sitting to watch the landing, which was more of a you know commanded and automatic process, we were expecting the best results. There was no doubt about it. In fact, we were all declared much in advance that we are going to have a soft landing this time. It came out of the, the understanding that we got from the previous mission and also the corrections and improvements that we did and the components we developed before we authorized the launch. So I was at ease. I was at peace to see the, the big event happening. But I never imagined the impact that it will create uh, later years after the soft landing. I must admit. Actually, at that time, the Honorable Prime Minister was also with, her, with you. Uh, we all have been witnessing the successful landing. But talking about that, the Prime Minister has announced 23rd August to be celebrated as National Space Day. Tomorrow, we are going to celebrate our maiden National Space Day with a theme, touching the lives while touching the moon. So, what is the vision behind this theme? What are we aspiring to? See, by the time that we started the space program, um, early, late 60s, uh, 1968, ISRO was formed. But then all the time we created a narrative why space technology and capability is important for the nation. For a nation which was just emerging to become a uh, technology power for later years, it was very difficult for us to uh, create a narrative of exploring moon at that point in time. The touching lives was very important. Uh, creating capability for the nation to serve the sectors like the agriculture, the water resources, the disaster management, environment, were the top priorities. So, we always created applications, uh, satellites and technology suited to that uh, direction. So, that precisely is the touching lives. Now, touching the moon came much later in 2008 when we talked about Chandrayaan-1 and uh, going to uh, create a you know, moon uh, saga later, Chandrayaan 1, 2 and 3, the Astrosat, the Mars Orbital Mission, the Exposat, many other scientific missions were planned much later years. And this transitioning from the societal based services of communication remote sensing also to bring in the elements of you know, exploration and science into it has been a difficult part. And this can happen only when you have reached certain threshold of capability so as to envision future. So it connects, the theme connects the past and the future. So while talking about Chandrayaan-3, uh, we have to speak about it. Even today, there were several articles that have been shipping in uh, the media that Pragyan rover has found a magma volcano in the young moon. So what are the findings that are essential for India in particular and general for the world scientific community as well as for all of us? So could you share some light on that? So Chandrayaan-3 was primarily designed to create a soft landing capability. But along with that, we had five instruments on board. And they, all the five instruments were exceedingly good instruments. 
Fortunately, after the soft landing, everything worked very well. You would have seen the rover came out very well. It moved on the surface for 100 meters. Then the uh, three of the experiments on rock lander, the Vikram, as well as two of them on the rover worked very well. So we collected a lot of samples of data. And one of the paper that came out is what you refer to today, uh, came out of one of the payloads, which looked at the mineral composition on the surface of the moon at multiple locations. I came to understand that there was from 24 locations on the moon. The analysis was done and the analysis indicated a distribution of the elements on the surface indicated the magma nature of the material which was very clearly visible because of the multiple local mineralogy mapping that we could do unlike many other missions in the past where they were single location data analysis. So this gave a much bigger view of the structure of the surface also link this information to the origin of the moon whether it came from what processes so it also brings into light that the moon was again an active volcanic object in the past. So that is the significance. Along with that, there are other observations we did. One related to the lunar regolith, which looks at the thermochemical phenomena. Of course, additional new outcome, it will come soon. We also have measurements of the atmosphere of the moon very close to the surface. We also measured the moon quakes and how that can be interpreted as its inner, inner activity. So all of this, I believe in the coming days, we will have more data. But uh, more important, I want to tell you that tomorrow we are going to release the entire science data that came out of the moon to the public researchers. It has still been contained with the, the scientists who created it, the instruments. Now it is going to be open after one year lock-in period, it's going to be open to the entire uh, country, maybe also the world. I'm sure we are going to be over the moon again tomorrow. As we celebrate, and as you mentioned about tomorrow as well, I would like to ask you on uh, the way ISRO is planning to celebrate with all of us. Of course, ISRO and people of this country are co coexisting in celebrating whatever the, our scientific minds do for us. So, could you tell us tomorrow there are several events that have been planned to celebrate National Space Day. For example, the seven zones that have been find, found by the ISRO where it's going to be exhibition, it's going to be people to visit. And could you share? So the yeah, events were happening already. It was just not tomorrow. The last one month, we have been organizing various events with the support of ministries, departments of the government of India, the higher education departments, the schools, education department, scientific ministries, departments, as well as other organizations in this country like NGOs, etc. They have been organizing various programs and we were part of it from ISRO scientists who are going there, giving classes, lectures, competitions, uh, cartoon exhibitions, science expos, you know, model building exercises and presentations and uh, hackathons. Okay, two of the important things that we are going to have tomorrow uh, and tomorrow it's going to be the culmination of all of this uh, into one event where we are going to have an inauguration where the Honorable President of India will come and then inaugurate the function. We'll also have an exhibition which will showcase some of the futuristic goals of ISRO and also participation of industries as well as ministries and departments who are actually using the space-based data. Followed by that we are going to have a sessions in which we will uh, highlight the socio-economic impact of the space program, how it created a report will be released. We will also release the, as I mentioned earlier, the science data release uh, of the Chandrayaan refined things. At least some something like 50 gigabytes of data will be announced to be released from our science data center. We will also have uh, round tables uh, where the ministries departments will work in various areas. Also round tables from industries as well as academic institutions specific to space sector. Let me bring our discussion to yesterday. Yesterday, there was a curtain raiser event towards celebrating our National Space Day tomorrow, wherein our uh, Honorable Minister for Science and Technology has said, and I quote, that Chandrayaan 3 was a milestone, Chandrayaan 4 and 5 will follow. So, would you, I would like to know from you what Chandrayaan 1, 4 and 5 holds for us. And in addition to that, there are endeavors like human to space and establishment of Bharatiya Antrix Station by 2035 as well as the coordination that is going on with the Indian Navy on crew module recovery. So could you talk us on these? After the Chandrayaan 3 landing, uh, possibly you are aware that our Honorable Prime Minister made a big announcement. Uh, it, the announcement was the vision for 2047, the, for the Amrit Kali, specifically on space, space. And this announcement contained various elements. One, that we are going to build a part of the station. Uh, putting it uh, a space, space station 28-2035 time frame. We are going to send an Indian to moon, land on the moon and bring him back. 
by 2040. So all this uh, requires certain uh, long-term programs. You mentioned about Chandrayaan 3 and 4 and 5 are precursors of these steps that are to be taken to send a human being to moon and bring back. So we have been successful in going and landing, but coming back is another you know, tricky thing. And that is going to be proven in Chandrayaan 4. And we are going to demonstrate a much bigger rover, not the one like the Pagyan, but maybe 10 times bigger than that, how to take it to moon and land and then do experiments, not for two weeks, but for months together, how to do that. That's the second experiment of Chandrayaan 5. And we are going to have a human spaceflight program called Gaganya, which will send the human to space by next year and expand that program to build space station and continued uh, presence of human beings, Indians on, on that station for ne next 20, 25 years leading up to the manned mission to the moon. So all of these are part of that long-term vision that has been stated by Honorable Prime Minister. And also, sir, when we talk about the achievements of ISRO, there are Time is, time is not available for us because that's sort of an achievement, what we have. And we have touched Mars for the very first time. We have landed at the South Pole of the Moon. As a matter of fact, we have shown the world how the South Pole will look like. And then we have also landed at the L1 point of the Sun, the Aditya mission. So you have highlighted what's next for us. So it's, it, it feels absolutely awesome. Now talking about this, there are and talk about scientific temper, bringing in or improving scientific temper, which is the fundamental duties, one of the fundamental duties. So how ISRO is collaborating with the nation towards in, 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 you know, bringing in the children, the youth, the women who want to aspire into space science. See, the uh, our success of ISRO has many elements, as you mentioned about our engagement with the scientific community of India. Uh, we deal with in many layers, as you mentioned, starting from the scientific institutions like uh, the research laboratories in this country who are specifically on space-based research or other domains which are linked to space. Also with the top academic institutions of IITs and all that. Also second tier and third tier institutions, we deal with them. We connect with them through our respond and research programs of grants and mentoring. We work with industries to develop indigenous capabilities. We also go to schools and colleges to inspire people. Of course, we cannot work on new technologies development with them, but we can only make them learn, understand. Some of the initiatives to connect with the schools, I will tell you. We, every year, we conduct programs across schools, piloted by our uh, centers and units across the country. They take hundreds of schools, especially less privileged places, and go and give classes. We also conduct annual uh, in residence program for students of 8th and 9th class uh, come to ISRO and then work every year we take 400 students take it to ISRO two weeks of mentorship internally visit centers and give them understanding of it and these are top students of every state are brought here then we conduct visiting programs of students to institutions of laboratories which are near to their place so this is also done by appropriately centers connected to the uh, educational department of the concerned states we organize these events we conduct annual hackathon events for students and uh, researchers who are in this page. Two other recent uh, work are, one is a robotic challenge, which has just concluded. They will be receiving award from president tomorrow. And also a space hackathon in which space-based data based application development, primarily to look at startups and incubation possibility through space data services. So that also concluded three of them got prizes, all students. Uh, we are, they are going to get these awards uh, from president and some of them will be mentored to create industries themselves. And finally, the whole of the space day activity across the nation in all schools, we have distributed materials for them to learn, understand. And possibly you can also look at our website, which will give you methods to learn space and related topics, even to get a certificate going through a course program in through our website for students. So while talking about uh, plans and programs, uh, I would like to ask you on the, the aspect which the minister has highlighted once again yesterday, the curtain raiser event, about the startups. Recently, in a quick span of time, we have received around more around 300 startups with global potential to that have ventured into the space sector. And how do you see this in connection to the space policy of 2023, which arguments and the flourish of commercial space activities as well as the entrepreneurial aspect. How do you see this non-participation of non-government entities 
with the space sector of India. I am really thankful to Honorable Minister to bring out that point in the in the in the Hatan Raisa yesterday. It's a very important topic how startups are getting encouraged to work in the space sector. We know today there are potential space based startups across the country. In the last 10 years or so, we could see the fast rise of them, many of them into the application side, a few of them into the rocket building and satellite building. And there is enough of money that is coming into them. Last year itself, almost 1000 crore has come to these startups. And we see that they have the potential, primarily innovation, new ideas. And second, in terms of bringing talents and, and uh, capturing talents to create new capability, bringing, uh, in, making India a manufacturing hub of space activities. So we can say that our space economy is booming. Has the potential to boom. It's yet to happen. So we are only in the early phase of the space of sector opening and new space policy is going to enable that. For that, we need many, many elements, not only the startups. We also want big companies to invest in space, create a lot of infrastructure, take up the responsibility of manufacturing of space systems that ISRO has been doing so far in industry. We are taking steps for it, like a launch vehicle production, satellite production, etc. Uh, actually, it brings me to ask you on the aspects, especially that has been mentioned in the space policy, the strategy, one of the stra key main strategy, which I consider is provision of public goods and services using space technology. So, could you tell us how are we going to achieve this? Through many things. So, you know, space can do many things. For example, it can do communication, it can do remote sensing, it can do PND services, it can do strategic activities. So, you talk about goods and services. It's one of the services. For example, PND services can do logistic services. Uh, through mapping services, you can help them to plan, you know, resources. Communication is essential for all of this. So I can tell you space becomes an integral part of all of all our infrastructure development. So space technology is nothing but national infrastructure. So which brings me to my ultimate question, sir. For a, for a youth who finished their college, who want to venture, but who aspires and ambitious to venture their career into space, as well as your message to the budding children, youth and women who aspires to be in space sector, space science. How do you think that the space education and innovation is going to help? What's your message? See, space is, uh, there is nothing called a space domain without the fundamental understanding of physics, chemistry, mathematics, biology. So you need to be good at science. You must understand the interaction between science and uh, the everyday life. So you need to be compassionate about some domains in science and technology. I can only advise young people, be very, you know, uh, know, creative, innovative, learn your subject very well. Space definitely has an opportunity for you, uh, but we can't take all of you into the space technology area alone because that's a limited domain. But there is a huge amount of other opportunities you know, available in this country. For example, electronics you know, development. It's a integral part of space technology capability. You can work on you know, additive manufacturing, artificial intelligence and robotics. You, know, you can look at data processing activities. All of this has some connection to space. So. I can only tell that today a, a technology savvy generation if you are able to create it will be very good for our country and economy so I will only say you look at space as a, an inspirational element see the success that we have done in space with the limited resources it can be duplicated at many many areas. So with that being said we wish you the very best from the bottom of our heart in all the endeavors and keep making us proud.